In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us ask our Lord for his mercy and forgiveness for our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here am I. He said, Take your son, your only begotten son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only begotten son, I will indeed bless you, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted even when I said, I am sorely afflicted. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, 
in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk in the presence of the Lord, in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, if God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Is it Christ Jesus who died Yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his garments became glistening, intensely white, as no fuller on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking to Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were exceedingly afraid. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved Son, listen to him. And suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man should have risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, 
questioning what the rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. We have just heard St. Mark's account of our Lord's transfiguration. Mark's account is especially instructive as to why the church recalls this event on this, the second Sunday of Lent. For his gospel contains many interlocking structures, patterns which bring out truths about our Lord himself and about the dignity and cost of our discipleship. One structure involves three great moments of revelation. At the beginning, the exact middle, and the end, our Lord's baptism, his transfiguration, and his death. When Jesus is baptized, God the Father says to him, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. It's the declaration of the Father's personal love for his eternal Son, which John the Baptist and perhaps others present were privileged to overhear, and which, thanks to John's witness and the evangelists, we are privileged to overhear. When Jesus is transfigured, God the Father says about him to the three closest disciples, this is my beloved son, listen to him. It's the declaration of who Jesus is and a charge to persevere in discipleship, which thanks to those apostles witness, we are privileged to hear. When Jesus dies, a human being, a Gentile, the centurion says about him, truly, this man was the son of God. It's a public declaration of who Jesus is, a declaration which over the centuries, many Jews and Gentiles have been privileged to make. These moments of revelation tell us who Jesus is and who we are privileged to be. For in our baptism, we ourselves made a declaration, a public declaration of faith, one we could only make by the Holy Spirit's gift. Even if, like the people currently preparing for baptism, we made it as adults. Through ourselves, or through our parents and godparents, we declared that Jesus is the Son of God at the time when we went into the water with him. We didn't overhear, we heard, said to us personally, Thou art my beloved child, with thee I am well pleased. We were adopted in Christ. As God's beloved children, we are granted moments of transfiguration in the course of our journey. Some are moments when, like Peter, James, and John, we are granted insights into how Jesus fulfills the Torah and the prophecies, the types and the covenants. Or we glimpse his glory veiled though it still has to be while we are on pilgrimage. We glimpse it in the sacraments and when together we proclaim our faith in response to God's word. When we see people drawn to faith, when we see the church renewed, when we have a sense of God's presence or beauty or providence, when some project is successful, in times of moral or spiritual growth, in the occasional miracle, and when we see Christ 
in other people's ministry to us. In some moments of transfiguration, it's our own faces that shine. When we are empowered to bear witness to the truth, when we are given helpful things to say, above all, when we are led by the Spirit to speak words or perform gestures of love. Perhaps people sometimes see Christ in us. Peter wanted to stay on the mountain, wanted to keep Jesus there, wanted to prolong the vision of glory, but he wasn't allowed to. He had to go down the mountain with Jesus and listen to his teaching as he walked with him to Jerusalem on his way of the cross. That's where Jesus would be most publicly revealed as the Son of God. That's where Jesus would most powerfully represent his Father. That's where his face would most brightly shine with his father, Father's mercy and compassion. Our baptism has committed us to follow Jesus all the way. The moments of transfiguration we enjoy spur us to walk with Jesus on his way. Ultimately, our share in his sonship is honed in our sharing his sacrifice. In Peter's case, his share in Christ's cross took a very literal form. We do not need to seek suffering for its own sake, but we are charged not only to speak words and perform gestures of love, we must share God's own mercy and compassion. If people are to see Christ's face in ours, it must be the face of the one who suffered with those whose faces are clouded with pain and sadness. In some way or other, we must die with Christ if we are to pass over with him to the glory briefly glimpsed on the mountain. Towards the end of our lives, the church conveys to us a final anointing another moment of transfiguration when our faces shine with sacred oil. That sacrament consecrates us for a final act of witness when in solidarity with Christ we give ourselves into our Father's hands that he may receive us as his beloved children. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring the needs of the church and the world and our own before our loving Father. For the Pope, the bishops, and other leaders of the church, that they may always lead us to the glory of our heavenly homeland. Lord, in your mercy. For the world, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence and glory of God. Lord, in your mercy. For the poor, the lonely, and the oppressed, that through our practical care they may see the favored Son of God. Lord, in your mercy. For those trapped in the darkness of sin, that the light shining in Christ may free them and bring them to God's favor. Lord, in your mercy. For our dead, that they may enjoy the blessed vision of divine glory forever. Lord, in your mercy. Let us now join our prayers to those of Our Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, to whom every heart lies open, every desire speaks plainly, and from whom no secret is hidden, cleanse, we pray, the thoughts of our hearts by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with holy Abraham and Isaac, with holy Moses and Elijah, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our holy Father Dominic and with all the saints. And with strong intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. We'd like to thank all those who have joined us from a distance, thanking you for your support and your prayers, and assuring you of our prayers for you and yours. The Lord be with you. Bow down your heads before God. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty you showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen.